Can you hear okay? Um, let's start. So my name is Thomas. I'll be uh, doing the level one and two. Uh, we'll start in uh, early January over Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, I'll, I won't take long here because I'm sure you're waiting to meet Joanne and tons of questions for her. Um, Irene had given something quick about what we offer. I guess for level one, um, we try to focus on what will be the main focus of each area. For level two, uh, the question being asked is very different. It's starting to focus on very specific areas of each topic. So level two is more calculation focused. Uh, if you are in the business, uh, you know how it works, then it's great. It'll be pretty easy. Uh, if you haven't, uh, it's actually like trying to go diving without ever learning how to swim. It can be pretty scary. Uh, so taking a course would be much easier in terms of uh, without having to spend tons of time learning a lot of things and trying to pass at the same time. So in terms of the demo lecture, uh, I'll give you a brief thing of what it would be like. For level one, it's more descriptive. So um, I probably will not try to do one of just describing what is uh, in each section. Uh, Maybe something quick about me. I'm from Hong Kong. I used to be a ex-accountant, uh, and then I was in iBank for a while. I retired, get bored. Um, it's hard having fun all the time. So I went back to school for my doctoral, and now I teach at various universities, and I'm here as well. I guess um, you're here because you want to pass, uh, or quickly without with the least amount of time. So instead of going through how we do it, I guess our focus is on uh, pass it the first time. At the same time, I guess we're all busy at work. So I don't expect you to want to study 20 hours each day without much social life or work life. So we'll uh, go through learning methods which will, uh, you can learn the most effectively and e efficiently given the time you have. In terms of the curriculum will cover most of it, but for the uh, level one, it's very general AI focused. So it will be more descriptive. There will be uh, some memorization, just because some strategies you have to know what it's like. There will be some formulas and a quantitative, of course. But it's nothing uh, difficult because we do it at a really conceptual level. Uh, you're not doing quantitative calculations by hand uh, in the exam. So if you know the basics, it'll be good. In terms of getting past the exam, I guess the eventual goal of getting one, there'll be a minority, maybe one or two of you, do it because you like it for fun. When I do it, I do it for fun. When I took my CAIA. Uh, I didn't thought I'll be in it, but it was actually great. Because if you look at finance business, you can do CFA, you can do mutual funds, but hey, those are old stuff. Not much innovations. If you look at the last five years, every innovations in finance, those that haven't blown up, work around engineering new products. So you're looking at like new medications for your uh, health, similar things. We have the most innovative products in AI area, which you won't find anywhere else. Even if you don't want to be in it, you see it everywhere. Even you work in a bank, you work for a corporation, you still see those, just the basic swaps, uh, uh, CDS, anything you see, you need to know those anyway. So for here, I guess the other thing is getting a job or if you want to be in it, um, I would hesitate to promise you a job if you get a CAIA. But just like CFA, it shows your motivation. Right? If you tell a, a hedge fund or a PE, I want a job with you, I'm good, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very smart, I'm motivated, and they asked, well, have you looked at CAIA? If you haven't, uh, it doesn't matter what you say. Right? So action speaks louder than words. In terms of what we we'll do in class, for level one, it's more general. I talked about it earlier. Joanne talked about the multiple choice, so uh, it's a relatively straightforward path. Level two, um, you get more focused topics. So we'll look at one or two of them. You don't, well, we don't cover everything like level one. 
instead of doing those, we assume you must have remembered what level one had. We'll focus on the more important parts or those that you see every day. So we'll, we'll look at one or two of them uh, later on. Um, and there's also essays as well. So uh, in level one, you might study enough and pass by recalling things, right, which is multiple choice. In level two, you might still get 70% of the, of the first paper because through recall as well. But here, it, it's make it difficult. Uh, in the essay part, you must know it uh, very well. It's no longer uh, recalling. Uh, you have to actually know what's going on and write down uh, in a very succinct, straightforward manner uh, in a very short time. So it makes it more difficult and challenging, but um, I think it's well worth the effort. So in terms of the study time, Joanne cover all those, so I'll just go straight to the demo lecture. Here, I don't only, only do a very short part. In the actual class and the content coverage, it will be probably five, three to five hours for each topic. But here's just outline of what you will see or what you need to do if you're in level two doing the same topics. So here we have two types of questions you'll see in terms of calculation and difficult ones. So one is the difficult or mechanical. So it's complex. You have to look at five different things, make sure they work. But once you get the mechanical down, uh, it's workable. So you can work through, just practice like crazy. The other type are easier, but it's theoretical. So here, for example, binomial tree. Um, you might have worked through it for your options class, but now we do it for convertible bond valuation or for CDS. So unless you know how the whole structure works, uh, I can ask you one small question of something in the middle of the theory. If you don't know, <laughs> then you don't know. So those are the two things we'll focus on uh, in the course. Uh, this is some example of what we do in the PE fee. This is the complex but uh, a mechanical part. So here you might be given a question of a private equity, how they charge the fees. And it's actually quite a few. Uh, real life, it's all different. But you negotiate with the PE manager, depends on how much money you have, it, it's always flexible. But the basic fees they have comes in different forms. Right? They have commitment fee uh, and organization fee as they set up. And then they have transaction fees and monitoring fees. So those are on the full investment size. Right? So if you give them 10, uh, let's say a billion of your own money, then that will work on the 2%. But when they use your money to buy investments, they leverage up. And the transaction fee and the monitoring fee is based on the full amount, including the debt. So when you do the calculations later on, you have to account for all those uh, uh, to deduct the hurdle rate, uh, a hurdle rate and the clawback provisions. So these are all part of in the contract. So you need to know what to do with them uh, as you're calculating the fees. So after all it's done, uh, a few more things on return. Because if you're investing, you want to know what your return looks like. So even after they sell all the investments, you deduct all the fees from here, then you get a cash flow for your actual IRR for your investment. It's an involved process. You will not be asked to do the whole thing. It takes hours. But uh, if you can answer a simple question of, so what happened in year three? They bought, uh, uh, they bought a new firm leverage of four, four times. Uh, what would the transaction fees be? So you have to somewhat figure that out. Uh, there are many offsetting things as well. So if you know the mechanical parts, it's workable. Okay. So there's the uh, complex but mechanical version of the quantitative question. The second is um, binomial tree. This is the easier but theoretical. So if you know the answer, you can get a perfect mark for the question in three minutes, three sentences. Uh, if you don't know the answer or are not sure, it can take you three hours, write 10 pages with no marks. So here, we'll, uh, in the curriculum itself, there are two parts. They use the same trait, just different purpose. 
right? One is use it to uh, value convertible bonds. Uh, I guess now it's not as popular because um, too many people do it, but maybe 10 years ago, many convertible bond funds, right? They look at opportunities for uh, pricing variations and profit from it. So they were using those models. Uh, we do a simple version. They use a multi-processor computer. We use our multi-brain and, and ten-finger hands and do it by hand. But the basic structures are the same. Uh, we'll also do the binomial tree for CDS valuation. So if you go to buy a CDS, I think Greek will blow up, Greece will blow up tomorrow. I want to buy CDS to protect my portfolio. You call JP Morgan, they quote you a price. Right? So how would they know how much to charge? They use the same structure, except they look for different things in the structure. Uh, in the previous case, they checked the option price at the beginning. In the CDS, they check for probability of default, given the same structure in, the, in theory. So those two will be the more theoretical. You might be asked some calculations or just reason why something worked within the theory. So two major types. The others are just principle of how AI works in terms of the multiple choice. Here, probably I'll skip this part. Just a quick way of how to do it for binomial tree. If I ask you, I'm here today, I ask you, what do you think I will be like in 10 years' time? How would you know? Right? Or if I'll be rich driving a Ferrari in 10 years' time. You can pick a wild guess, or you can do it like a binomial trick. So here, I guess I'll be the stock. So me, today, next year, the year after, and so on. And you trace what happened to me. Right? I can be getting richer and richer. I can get very poor. So you cover all my tracks of what will happen to me in the next 10 years. So this is the first step. You check what the underlying looks like. And then you check the, the value of the option, given I'm at each stage. So if I'm here today, I get rich and I get poorer, and so on. And then you see, given my state of condition, uh, what the option will be worth. And in the last step, just I didn't want to fill it in. Just bring it back to the present value. In theory, it's actually very simple. Uh, real life, people use this a lot because you heard of black shows they use. They use this or Monte Carlo. But most will use this just because it's so simple to program on a computer. Right? Black shows is even easier and simpler, but you can't do much with it. Right? You cannot do options. You cannot do floaters. You cannot do anything special. Uh, um, exotics, you can't do on it. So this, you can build in all the exotic features. Uh, you can do anything you like on this, and you can do it very easily on a computer. So people like doing it because it's flexible, and many back offices use it for valuation or risk management as well. So we'll do this. Uh, it's very useful real life as well. But this is something for, just now those two are for the essay or calculation part. This is more for the regular multiple choice. So given this, I'll give you two minutes to read. So that's today's U curve with the hump. Uh, you expect to be the same next year. So given this curve now, if everything stays the same, so the four-year treasury becomes a three-year next year, right? And the rates will stay the same. In other words, my seven-year treasury today will be a six-year to, to uh, next year, 
So if I buy it now, it yields 4.5. A year later, the market rate is 3.75 then. Right? It becomes a six-year yield. So now it yields 4.5. Next year, it, the market yield is lower. So this, if I bought this today, it will be worth more. Right? Because it yields higher than the markets. So here in this case, for the seven year, if you know the price will go up in a year's time, then I'll just long it. Right? So here, I can start choosing questions. So for here, B is possible. I'm long a seven. For D, it says short a seven, so you know D would be out. Second, I'll look at, let's say, a six year, right? Because I'll just go back that way. Four, you don't need to look for, because you don't know what the three year rates is going to be, right? So no need to look for four. This one will not be the answer. So for six, uh, now it's 375. A year later, you buy or sell it today, it will yield four. So the market rate is higher than the 375 today. If you buy today, the price will go down in a year's time. You want to make money, you short it. Right? Just the opposite of the year of uh, the seven year now. So check again for the answer. Here, I'm long a six, so this one also make it impossible. You got B as the answer at the end. Right? So here, just by eliminating things, you don't have to do all of them. It saves you half the time if you know which approach to use. So this will be, this is probably a non-representative question. You see a lot more simpler ones, but let's say you have 100 questions, uh, 12, uh, 120 minutes, so 1.2 minutes per mark, per question. So I'm sure some will be, take less, will take less time, much less time than this, but on average you get 1.2 minutes per, per mark per question, right? So here, if there are other things, uh, you can check with Irene or Joanne, but for me, you have other questions you want to ask? Okay. Thank you. Uh, pass the book around, take a look. It's actually very interesting. Nice reading.